What's up guys? Derek Harris here, HP Race Development. I've got a stick metering assembly. This is an N3 EJ needle that we recommend for most people who uh, run the stick block on a host of bikes. We just opened the package and pulled it out. I wanted to walk you through what you need to do to file the tip of your needle to make sure that the needle is not restricting wide open fuel flow, which is very common um, in the stick block because of our jet numbers. So because our jet numbers are, are up there to be the correct amount of fuel for what you need uh, with the stick block and how they work, uh, the, the standard design of the needle is actually restrictive at wide open throttle to the amount of fuel flow that you need. And so obviously your needle sits in like this and then at, at idle and then it opens up and it sits like this at wide open and uh, it's restricting a little bit of fuel flow in that little hole. Now it doesn't seem like it's restricting much, but something, you know, compared to the size of your jet hole. However, it's really important to note that anytime you put two parallel or in, I should say two restrictions in series, the total amount of flow will be reduced as opposed to if you just had one restriction, even if they were both of the same size. So you had two main jets in a row, um, you're going to get less fuel jet, uh, fuel flow out than you would get if you just had one main jet. And that just has to do with, uh, the, the, frictional losses that occur when you increase the velocity um, through an orifice. So long and short, what we do is we take the needle, all right, we get a flat file. You don't have to have a really great file because these are aluminum. And um, you can measure this really precisely if you wish. A lot of people are, are very particular, but it really isn't that critical because we want the wide open fuel flow to be not affected. And so one way you can do that is stick it in your carburetor, put the, put the throttle to wide open, and then take a Sharpie, and that's what we like to do, and mark from the front side where you're at at wide open throttle and you just get a little sharpie and put a mark on your needle and then that way you know about how far up you need to go but from experience and obviously we've done a lot of these we know that we need about a quarter of an inch so what we do is we take the file we put our finger on the on the needle like this we get up about a quarter of an inch and then we just go back and forth like that at a slight angle we don't want to have a big step we just want to have a nice smooth a flat ground into it and so we'd barely taken any off here okay that's not nearly enough so what you do is you just keep working it back and forth make sure you try to get fairly even pressure and just take your time obviously you'd rather not take enough off than take too much off now you can't really do too much but we don't want to compromise the integrity of the needle so for that reason you know take your time and make sure that you get about half of the needle ground away that's what I like to do. And as you can see, we're slowly but surely creating a flat on the needle, okay? So I'm gonna go a little bit more for this particular needle. And we blend it so that it smoothly transitions into the top part of the needle, okay? I'm gonna do just a tiny bit more. All right, voila. This is what we would do and send out for our stick users. As you can see, there's a flat. So now, when we're at wide open throttle, okay, we have a lot more flow area available to us than we had previously. Um, there's actually a couple of Makuni needles on the market that come in YZ125s and, and a lot of Makuni needles that have a stepped round tip. So they would be perfectly round, but with this nice restrict, uh, uh, they make the needle much smaller at the end so that the needle doesn't play a, a role at wide open throttle. This is really important. Now, if you're running really low needle clip positions, like if the needle's at the first or second uh, clip from the top, you might have to extend how high up you go with this so that it's that when it's at wide open throttle, okay, it's not restricting fuel flow. Do not make the needle shorter. You need the length of the needle to be, stay the same so that it doesn't pop out of your needle jet uh, at wide open throttle, which would then cause a hanging throttle issue. So that's the end of it. As you can see, there's a nice little flat there. This works really, really well. And lastly, and importantly, uh, something to note is that um, on these assemblies, if you are having, let, let, let's say that you are making a jet change and you just not, not getting the result you expect. Let's say you go from 190 to 195 to 200, 205, 215, and you have done a small flat on these you didn't do enough essentially. So then you would just need to go and just take a little bit more out. And what you're encountering there is that this is just becoming a restriction. Um, and so that, that's something to note. If you're making jet changes and not seeing the dividends of those changes on your main jet, 
uh, it's just because this is becoming your primary restrictor. And one way to test that, that's what I was going to get to, I forgot, is to pull your main jet out of the bike. And if the bike runs pretty darn well at all throttle positions, including wide open with the main jet out, you know that your needle is the restricting factor. So that's really uh, something to keep, you know, keep in mind. The last little bit is when you install this, I always get the question, well, hey, Derek, which way should it be? Should it be forward or back? It doesn't matter. Um, just put it in there. It's it's just flow, it's just a uh, flow area, and um, it won't make a difference. And also, a lot of people don't know, but um, most of the time when the bike's running, the needle might spin around quite a bit anyway, and it actually vibrates back and forth. Uh, it's it's a unique in, you know oddity of, of carburation. So anyway, that's it. Till next time.